you may have seen a short film I made recently about an old bridge over the river Tweeda, a road we known as Bridge End Bridge. And I think the film raised more questions than gave answers, but I've managed to uncover a few, a few more facts about the bridge today. We're at the head of the bridge now, it's just the main Melrose, Melrose Road there at the end of Langley and the bridge is just down here or should I say the remains of the bridge so we'll head down if you are thinking about coming down here it is quite overgrown and quite difficult to get to get down but now I had almost given up hope to finding any more information about this bridge other than what I had which wasn't very much but last night I was I was reading a book online uh, about Gala Shields. Here's the, the link to the book. Uh, a very a very old book. Uh, but I got to about chapter three and what do you know he starts talking about the bridge. I've actually managed to scramble through the brambles down to the front facing of the bridge today. So we've got a better, better closer look, might even be able to see some sort of foundations or something like that this side. But anyway, what the what the uh, this book says. Now I always thought that potentially the bridge was something royal, something to do with the monks at Melrose Abbey. And I think it was built for the purpose of serving Melrose Abbey, but it was funded by a guy for the Gala Shields called a Lord Pringle. I think has got a lot to do with the history of Gala Shields. So uh, apparently at, w at one point a p part of the ruin was taken from the water and on that ruin it had stated that Pringle had, had gave over so many pieces of gold to have the bridge built. So far from being nothing to do with Gala Shields it was probably one of the first major constructions for the Gala Shields area. On the middle of the bridge in the middle tower it bore the Pringle coat of arms, who was like, I don't know, he was like one of the main royalty guys in Gala Shields. Don't think I'm going to get very much further along the side here, but definitely on, on, the, on the rocks there's some sort of evidence in man, man-made chips or knocking back of the rocks to abut the, the sides of the bridge. But, and this is where it gets really interesting, the bridge has been immortalised. And who was it that immortalised it? It was Sir Walter Scott. Yes, yeah, Sir, Sir Walter Scott wrote two novels based on this area. One was called The Monastery and the other was called the Abbot and in both these stories the bridge plays a figure role in the plotline and we learn about the bridge keeper and how you cross the bridge and, and what it was like to cross the bridge now apparently when when Sir Walter Scott was alive he would come down here at night with his boat salmon fishing and you could sometimes in the summer in the low, low river season you could see the remains of the bridge in the water and so Walter Scott died in 1832 so that means that the bridge has definitely been wiped out long before 1832 so there you have it evidence the bridge was in that exact spot that I said here's the map was built by the, the people, if you like, of Gallish Hills. And if you want an accurate or even romanticised description of what the bridge was like and what it was like to cross it, then you need to, to read Sir, Wal Sir Walter Scott's book, The Monastery. Reading that book, The Monastery, has actually made me think about another Gallish Hills historical 
quite modern day legend so if you will dare follow me come this way yeah if you if you dare come along to this place one mile along from roughly one mile along from the bridge site this place is known as Elwyn Glen these days in the days of Sir Walter Scott it was known as the Fairy Dean anybody who's from Gallish Hills definitely from the sort of Langley area of Gallish Hills will have heard the legend of the White Lady now, I've often wondered where the the legend of the White Lady came from was it true Someone that someday had made up in Gala Shields in 1975 or something like that. But no, it came from the Sir Walter Scott novel, The Monastery. Same one that mentions the bridge. Talking about bridges, there's about five old bridges up this up this uh, Elwyn Glen. You can clearly see the foundations of them. But yeah, the legend goes that this, this white lady, this spirit being, roams the forest to Elwyn Glen wailing or singing or however you want to say and uh, our only release from the spirit world is to marry a human being man so if you're ever up here and you see a white shadowy figure wailing in the forest background then go and ask for a hand in marriage because you'll probably say yes you know I'm actually starting to believe that this place is magical because I came up here last Monday, over a week ago uh, I was making another film, a comedy film which you can see on uh, YouTube if you want to see that but I lost this it's a little, little bit that attaches my camera to my tripod but I lost it, I, I didn't know where I'd lost it, I'd given up all hope so I went and got a new one today and then I came up here just now and I stopped to sort of crouch down and do a bit of filming and that's lying right at my feet, buried in the leaves. What chance, what is the chances of you finding that? There's something, something spiritual up this place, I tell you.